On a recent video that I posted about Tinkercad, a commenter reminded me about the sketch tool. And I tried it before, it was a little bit clunky, I was struggling with it, so I just ignored it. That was a huge mistake because after spending more time with this tool, it's really good. We're gonna go through the basics of it. I also wanna give you some tips that helped me get through this because I was approaching this in the wrong way. And just give you a quick little sample at the end to show you just where you can go with this. I really like this tool. It's the sketch tool. Let's check out this sketch tool here. Let's drag this out onto our work plane. When you do that, it opens up your workspace here and you can just start sketching. What I'm doing right now is I'm just dropping points down onto my grid here and you'll see that it connects it all together with straight lines. And once I complete the shape, that is the shape that you've just built. Now you can still edit this shape by selecting it and clicking on this button here on the side called Edit Modify Selected Shape because here you can take those points that you just threw down and you can continue to move them around. In fact, there's a tool here that allows you to add and remove points from your object. Going back to select and move, I can select one or more points. I can select a point here and I can determine what happens at that point. I can keep it as a straight corner, a smoothed out corner, where I have the option now to adjust what happens with that curve using these grab handles here. I can make it a larger curve. I can change the angle of that curve. And the third thing I can do is I can take this and break those handles so they move independently of each other. Whatever you end up with, your finished shape can then be added to your work plane. And there it is there. If you're not happy with it, just click on it again and you're back in the sketch tool where you can select it and again continue to edit and modify your shape. Add points, remove points, change the curves, change your corners. It's up to you. Finish sketch when you're done and you're back in your work plane in Tinkercad. The other thing you can do, because this is basically an object, you can throw down your sketch object onto a surface of another object along the side. And you can see here that when you do that, you have that outline of that object. So you have a point of reference when you start to create your object shape. You know exactly where it's going to fit in relation to that object because you can see the outline here. If I have two objects in my view and I throw down my sketch, I can see objects that are hidden from view because they're behind another object. And I can still use that as a frame of reference, even though technically speaking, it is behind the other object. Very handy when you're trying to create a shape in relation to other objects on your build plate. Here is another helpful tip. When I place my sketch on another object, you'll notice that I have this grid line here and that object is not centered to my grid line. And I use these grid lines as a point of reference. So in order to have these nicely line up, I would select both those objects and use the align tool. And I would align them so I'd center them all together. And once they're centered, get out of the alignment tool and select my sketch. And you'll see now that the object that I'm about to do the sketch on is now centered in my grid lines here. It's a helpful tool for me because it allows me to keep things symmetrical if I'm trying to draw specific shapes. So here's a tip that helped me out. You'll notice here that you have grid snapping, that this cursor will snap to certain points on your screen. Right now it is set to one millimeter. I can change that though by going down here and I can change it so maybe it's going every five millimeters. You can see now that this cursor or the dot that's about to be placed is jumping every five millimeters. I can go smaller than that. I can go 0.1 or I can turn it off altogether where there is no grid snapping whatsoever. It's up to you. But for me, it helps with symmetry in the objects that I'm trying to create when I have grid snapping. So here is another tip that really helped me. When I was using this tool initially, I was thinking of connecting the dots as a way to create shapes here. 
However, because you can influence and change how the lines bend around your different dots or points, you don't need to have as many points as you might think. And you'll see here that we are nowhere close to having a circle here. It's because I have too many points. Instead, I could have drawn a circle with just four points or four dots. Make a square and select all my points. And make them smooth curves. This is my circle. Four points. So my big tip here is try not to throw down so many points initially when you're trying to create your shapes. You can always add points later or take points away. I find it is so much easier to deal with shapes when you only have a few points that you're trying to wrap your lines around. We are going to build a chair. This is a time lapse of my build here in Sketch. I'm doing the side profile of the chair and I'm going to smooth out those corners. I can adjust the points. It's fantastic. Now I'm back in the build plate and you can quickly see I can adjust this like I would any other object in Tinkercad. And now I'm adding a sketch on top of the original sketch in order to build the legs of my chair. And I'm using my original chair shape there as a reference for my legs. Once I'm back out in the work plane, I can treat that object like any other object. I can resize it, turn it into a hole, I can align it with other objects, and that's how I complete the railing or the legs of my chair. All right, here I am just grouping those objects and duplicating them to complete the other side of my chair. I forgot the headrest. I need to add a headrest to this. So I'm going back and sketching in yet another object, aligning it to the back of the chair, and just extending it across the width of that chair, just like any other object. I just want to round off the top edges or top corners of my chair. So I'm going to, again, use the sketch tool, and I'm going to create, basically, a hole or a cookie cutter that I will use to apply to those corners. Again, using the chair as a reference becomes really important here. The ability to align those points because of my grid snapping is awesome. And if I'm not quite happy with the shape, I can just re-enter the sketch tool, realign my points, move them around, change the shape around those corners, and then back back out and reapply those changes. This would have taken me so long using just the basic shapes in Tinkercad, and I don't think I'd be able to get that kind of shape without Sketch. That just took me a few minutes to do. Imagine what you can do when you spend time with the proper measurements and you're looking at specific objects and you have a specific design in mind and not just riffing off the top of your head. The possibilities are endless. All right, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. We will see you on the next one.